sorry um uh, i thought i'd put the phone on uh, on aeroplane mode but um but uh sometimes when there is something like a message or like something like a incoming call uh the the phone has been set that uh that that it terminates the video and then um uh, uh the, the incoming call is given a priority and therefore the in the video just cuts off and i'm really sorry for that but um but uh for now i've now put the phone on the aeroplane mode and so that uh, there will be no disturbance uh, whatsoever from the from uh, from any incoming call uh, this lecture is is important okay so um i just like to see what i can remember well, exactly where i was before the the disruption but i think i'll just uh saying that that uh, bank has got this uh some numbers indicated like in this case 18 5 17 like in this case here so the fourth number refers to either sulfur which can be added or uh, or uh, calcium and uh, as i mentioned uh, most of the salts contain in one form or another of calcium and therefore um so the fourth number usually refers to the elemental content of 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 sulfur yeah but if it is any other element that that element is put in in bracket so so I've just try to to show that in this case we've just given a question 27 uh, kilogram bag of a fertilizer has the following numbers so i've just tried to to break down these numbers here like 18 5 17 we've got this one it is just like the three uh the first one always refers to the uh percentage of nitrogen the second one is on phosphorus phosphorus yeah or phosphate yeah the third one is on uh, potassium or the as they indicate it as uh, potassium yeah? yeah so so if there is a fourth one it indicates the the percentage of what of uh, your sulfur let me tell you these are the simplest calculations that you are just going to get and um, uh, so you're just going to see if you're just given there to just told the to determine the the percentage of all the elements the pattern is 18 over 100 times the weight of of the of the bag yeah so you'll be able to determine that percentage the one for the phosphorus the one for the uh potassium and the same thing about this one this one has got four four figures uh and what you're just going to see is that uh, that addition of those uh, figures are not going to give you exactly the weight like in that case 27 uh the the thing is the remaining weight is filled by something called a filler material yeah just as you can get something like uh like uh like like a drug like what like panadol it may be it may be something like a capsule but but the actual actually active ingredients could be something like a uh, like uh, 0 0.5 uh, milligrams not even grams yeah 0 0.5 milligrams so the rest is something is an inert material called a filler material just to fill fill it up to be able to make it to be handy yeah so these are the fertilizer calculations typical calculations that you're likely to get now let's go to the <coughs> excuse me to the next topic and i think um, uh, this one is quite uh, 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 cuts across everyone. Uh, but the first one, I think, I think is the bow systems who are likely to be to be uh, carrying it on uh, for the rest of their life, looking at the fertilizers as opposed to mechanical, civil, and uh, petroleum. But anyway, anything can happen. Yeah. So it's just good to know all those calculations. But on electrochemistry it cuts across all the groups and um, uh, and you really have to you really know how to handle uh the cells and the, and the batteries and and the and the lecture on the electrochemistry is quite quite but i just need to mention a few things here um, so you just need to put your uh, uh the Okay, the thing is, uh, when you're dealing with electrochemistry, 
you're dealing with uh, two types of, uh, of cells. Uh, let me start with the second one, which is, which is uh, less common, but, but it is uh, very much uh, critical uh, to the uh, products that you're going to get in day-to-day -day life. And most of the uh, elements that we require, like aluminum and the rest, are found in their reactive uh, format, like in their ox oxidized manner, like, like aluminum oxide and the rest, yeah? But uh, they need to be uh, reduced to their pure form. So this is now where electrolysis comes in, yeah? Uh, so the electrolysis is through something which you call an electrolytic cell. In this case, you're going to supply voltage. In this case, uh, you're going to supply a specific voltage uh, across the terminals, and that is going to, uh, to supply electrons uh, is going to reduce the, the reactive element uh, to, uh, to their pure form. But in the typical manner, what you're likely to get will be a reactive element that you're going to be given, like as you mentioned, aluminium, uh, like, uh, or maybe zinc and the rest. And then you're going to be given uh, an element that, uh, that can be uh, that needs to be reduced, that can easily be reduced uh, in nature. So like in this case, I've given an example of nickel and also uh, silver, yeah? So uh, what you have in the, uh, like in the lecture, you'll see something called a reduction potential. So the, like the figures, like this one, they are gotten from that, from that table here. All that you need to know is that is that uh, out of this one, um, like in this case, you've been given uh, two figures. One is negative, one is positive. But sometimes you can be given two, uh, two, uh, two reductive potentials in which both of them are negative. Maybe you can be given negative 0 0.5 and the next one is, is negative, uh, 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 maybe negative uh, 0 0.70. Yeah? So in this case, what you're saying is that the more negative it is, then the, that is the the one which will be reducing it. Yeah? It will be acting as the reducing. It means that it is it is oxidized. It is it is transformed to be an oxide. That means that that electrode. If you are going to have an electrode and it contains one which has a very negative uh, potential, that element will be dissolving into the solution. And the one which will be more less negative or more positive, it will be uh, it will be uh, uh, the reduced form, the, the solid form of that element, it will be forming more and more. It will be precipitating out in that, uh, in that half cell, uh, the one which will be less positive or, or more positive. So in this case, uh, 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 there are some uh, figures which are put here, but once again, there are there are those uh, videos which are put, and once again, this is not like, like a lecture, but just like a revision case. That oxidation is where you've got a metal, it is changed to, a, to, a, to an ion, and then it's releasing electrons. A reduction is, is when the, the, the ion are receiving electrons and they're being changed back to their, if possible, to their, to their solid form. But reduction can also mean uh, 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 a reduction in the in the in the oxidation state. Like maybe if you are going to say you had ion three yeah, and it is changed to ion two, it has it, it has not yet gone back to, to to ion solid. So, but this one has been done. What has been reduced? Yeah, has been reduced uh, from ion three to ion two. And just so 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 these are the things that you will find in the, the lecture. Reduction occurs at the cathode. Oxidation at the at the anode. So, so at the anode is where the, the current is going to be is going to be passing through the voltmeter, just going to show it is positive, and then the reduction at the at the at the cathode, that's where the, the electrode is actually receiving the electrons to effect the, the reduction. So if you have been given such a figure here, uh, so the first thing would be to put uh, to put uh, to put it in a, in a balanced manner. So that in this case you're going to see that 
the one which will be oxidized yeah uh, you put it on the on the left to show that uh, that's the one which is donating electron and then those electrons are picked up by the one which will be which will be reduced and then i think with the, with the cancelling of electrons we'll end up with with such an equation but the thing which is uh, imp important to this because the calculations that you're going to get will be asked what will be the observed uh, uh, emf uh, which will be produced and and the emf of the cell is given by the by the by the uh, electrode potential for the reduction cell minus the oxidation uh, potential for the, for the oxidation what you do is this and this is now where i need to emphasize to you class that the way these figures are given as the reduction potential please uh, as much as in this balance equation one you're putting on the left and the right here do not alter those signs the way they are like if it's going to be like oxidation or whatever that that you change the negative to the positive on the rest please 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 do not just take those figures the way they are like like in this case if we're talking about like the ether like like the one for the for the reduction you're simply going to take like the one for the for the reduction which in this case is uh, 0.8 and then you subtract from it the one for the uh for the for the oxidation you're simply going to take it the way it is uh, without doing any alterations if you're going to do any alterations then that will give you uh, a different figure but but for the e cell you're simply going to take the way it has been uh, given uh, in the reduction uh, in the in the chart of the reduction potential so so in this case uh, uh, if you're going to be given a typical question you'll have to to draw the yeah the half cells yeah uh, it's in the notes on on uh, on what constitutes a half cell and then the, there is also something called a salt bridge the the different electrodes and then there is the the voltmeter now sometimes you can be told to indicate the the direction yeah and the direction should be from the anode to the to the uh, to the cathode. So so in this case, I've really not put until until we just say a, hey, which is the nickel and which is the the silver. In that case, that will tell you uh, uh, from where you're going to be having the where you're going to be having like the nickel, where you're going to be having the silver. That will be go going to be indicating the the direction. But unless if you're told the the elements this is the standard illustration of a of half cell i mean of a of an electrochemical cell uh, or it's called like the galvanic cell because the galvanic cell is one in which it, it produces the the potential from from the chemical reactions that are taking place as opposed to the electrolytic cell is where uh, you're going to cause reactions but you're giving what you're giving a uh, 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 power coming into the cell. So, so these are the calculations that are dealing with what? That are dealing with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, electrochemistry, and these ones which are dealing with with fertilizer. So, I think as I as I take a uh, a break, I'll just mention something about about the uh, the the other thing which we've uh, uh, tried to that that it has been incorporated and that is multiple choice uh, questions and I think I just need to to mention a bit so that I just wrap it. all right class uh, let's proceed on uh, to this last uh, part of this uh, uh, enlighten, enlightenment on some of the things on on the on the multiple choice questions. Uh, I mentioned uh, uh, that the main part of this uh, presentation is not to tell you exactly this what's going to happen, but I want to mention that that typically uh, you are likely to get something dealing with uh, nomenclature, and, the, and in the first video there was something about the typical approach 
and uh, and as, engineer, as engineer, they are likely to get something dealing with uh, with uh, with uh, what calculations. Huh? And then I say that in typical and typical uh, manner, there are things dealing with uh, fuels, uh, fertilizers, and then on electrochemistry. So, so on, uh, multiple choice is going to cover the rest of the topic because um, uh, um, uh, uh, those uh, checking on the quality need to know that that the questions are covering everything which has been indicated on the on the syllabus topic. So the thing is, um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the multiple choice is going to come up the rest of the syllabus. So in this case, what is this thing dealing with? Uh, in the physical properties and the uses, uh, we really covered that on, on the on the first part of the course where, where we were deep we're looking at uh, the the properties for the alkenes, alkenes, alkynes, uh, alcohols, uh, ethers, uh, alkyl halides, uh, 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 aromatic compounds, uh, what? Uh, amines, carboxylic acid. I, I don't know what I've forgotten in one of them. Now there is the emphasis on uh, understanding about things such as Van der Waals forces, hydrogen force hydrogen bonds, uh, 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 dipole, dipole, and and particularly as they're related to things such as the carbohydrates and the proteins. I'm just giving you an, an overview on that. So you need to look at the, at the notes on that one and um, and any of these can come as as multiple choice. The good thing about multiple choice is that is that even if you do not know the answer uh, as much as you may be able to be uh, to be guessing, it's only one mark. Yeah, a multiple choice is only a one mark question. So there is very little to lose, uh, as opposed to the ones on the calculations and the nomenclature, which are a lot of marks. But 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 something like on the multiple choice, they are really one mark questions. They are not a lot. Yeah. So um, and um. Uh, and something we do not uh, uh, take that approach of which I know of some universities. Oh, we used to take that approach and uh, and really proved to be to be a bit of a disaster. And that is that uh, to avoid uh, to avoid what to avoid guesswork for any wrong uh, answer that we, uh, we uh, uh, somebody used to give. There was something like a negative one which used to be given, and therefore. But then in the end, some people would get negative marks in the multiple choice, and that was not good. And uh, so in this case, um, uh, regrettably, some people just try to guess. But in this case, if you guess and you guess correctly, well and good. If not, but but um, uh, they've been chosen very well to which you're going to get answers just, just as the way you've seen in cats. Very, very close, but there may be something which may make it wrong. Uh, you just need to really know that you really understand the course. Yeah. So I think um, uh, that's the much I will talk about. And once again, uh, I can say I've really not been very pleased by the fact that that we were not able to really finish on uh, on the. Uh, that part of getting getting your feedback just to uh, get question from you, but I think probably before Monday you can be able to 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 send any questions or suggestions uh, to me via the WhatsApp or my email J uh, That is uh, my email is J Mwaniki. So Mwaniki at U O uh, let me put it correctly. U O N B I dot A C dot K E J Maniki at U O N B I dot A C dot A. Yeah. So there can be questions that you can be able to really send to me because we've got up to Sunday evening and then uh, Monday to see our exam, which is at uh, eight thirty to to ten thirty. Physical exam. 
uh, it will be in your respective uh, departments. So I think um, that's the much I will I will talk about and um, uh, uh, I can say it's been uh, nice uh, dealing with you. Uh, it's a course uh, I've taught for for 12 years, but all those 11 years, uh, probably 10 years, because last year, uh, I think it's uh, last year, even last year it was face to face because it was December, January of 2019, 2020. It's only this. 2021 that it's been uh, online of which I'm seeing some challenges which were not there before but who knows yeah um, uh, who knows this year you may you may do much better than uh, than in the previous years maybe uh, even when this uh, COVID thing uh, may be over who knows maybe online may be the best way of really covering because sometimes something can happen and you may not be able to come to the to the lecture theater but something which I really feel has been uh, crucial is the fact that there are some things that can be seen on a video, like uh, like uh, stereochemistry and the rest, of which I was able to, to illustrate when you're dealing with, uh, with the alkanes and the rest, which uh, in a large lecture theater, uh, those at the back may not see exactly what is actually being, uh, being put on the board and also uh, the small uh, 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 whiteboard may not be seen very well from from the from the back. Yeah, yeah. So and sometimes uh, sometimes uh, power disruptions can really make a power point projector really restarting, and this can really affect the the delivery of the of the class. So I really hope um, you've really enjoyed uh, this course, Chemistry Two. And uh, probably you're going to say, hey, I think there's a difference between um, chemistry two and chemistry one. And just say, hey, this is the chemistry of of the of how uh, uh, chemistry relates to uh, to engineering. And just say, I think in what I can, uh, what I'm dealing with, either as a civil engineer, mechanical, biosystems, petroleum, I could say, hey, I think I can see some chemistry in this, or I can see chemistry in this, and I can be able to do some analysis and really uh, uh, get something of value out of it. So I really hope that uh, also this this may not be the last uh, we, we may encounter. Maybe there may be another course uh, we, we, may, we may encounter. Like for the petroleum, there is a course dealing with some something on uh, petrochemicals and the rest which is covered in the in the fourth and the rest and who knows there may be a course dealing uh, uh, which we may for which we may be uh, 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 we may what we may encounter in one or another so let me stop there and I say it's been uh, wonderful uh, 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 having this uh, video series. Uh, um, it's not to say that um, that if you come next, you'll see the same videos. Uh, what will happen is that I'll be able to really be modifying here and there. But for now, I think that's the matter I'll talk about. And I hope you really uh, enjoyed uh, this course. So let's stop there. And uh, and we we'll meet on, uh, on Monday. God willing, hopefully there will be Nothing to really ensure that uh, uh, hope, uh, course that the that the exam will not take place, but it's been set on Monday, twenty fourth of uh, of uh, what twenty fourth of May, uh, twenty twenty one, eight thirty to ten thirty. So let's stop there. Okay.